welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for stopping by in this video we'll be sewing this victorian corset dress that you can see on your screen so i drafted out this pattern a while back i'm going to leave the link in the comment section so go ahead and watch the pattern drafting tutorial before you come join us on this particular one so i have my pattern one to five and this is number one I went ahead to add half an inch on the side on the upper part and on the base and the center front is on fold so this is how your number one piece should be okay i'm going to open number one piece and i'll bring in my number two and i'm going to place number two side by side you can see my half an inch all the way around the pattern paper i added half an inch everywhere because i'll be using this half an inch to join okay so what i'm going to do now is to remove my paint like i said in the pattern drafting tutorial we are going to be cutting out two two piece each okay um so what you will be needing is four four piece each okay two for the lining two for the main fabric okay so i'm going to go ahead and place number two on number one as you can see so i placed the wrong part of number two to number one you should place the other straight part not the curvy part so you can see what i have here after sewing i sewed the straight part on number one and i left the curvy part this curvy part is going to be joined to number three i hope you guys are not confused so what i'll do is to bring in my number three um pattern and this is what it looks like you can see my half an inch all the way around also so i'm going to now place the curvy part of this number three to the curvy part of this number two i hope you understand now please pay close attention to how i am joining my fabric side by side you know we are working with too many pieces and it's going to be very very confusing so notch where you want to notch just so you know which fabric goes where just so you don't go and join the wrong fabrics together and it's not going to look flat okay so i've gone ahead to sew number three to number two and this is what it looks like so you'll be using the half an inch that you left to join all this fabric as you can see inside i used half an inch to join so we have number one here number two and number three you can see the curvy part of number two and three you see the way it's popping okay so don't forget to do that so the next thing is to bring in my number four i also added my half an inch allowance as you can see so arrange your pattern paper in a way that you know which of the um fabric goes where okay just notch where you need to notch okay as you can see on my own fabric i notch the base just so i know where the base is because this number four is a little bit confusing so i'm going to now place number four side by side with the rest and i'm going to pin them up okay just like i did before just like i've been doing i'm going to go ahead and sew using my half an inch allowance so guys after sewing number four in place this is what i have okay the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in my number five okay so number five is easy to locate because it has this arm or area on it okay so you are going to place them right sides facing right sides okay and you are going to sew using the half an inch so don't add half an inch to the side of number five okay because we already have our stitching allowance on the pattern paper there is no need to add any half an inch to the side that is why i did not add any allowance to the side of number five so what i'm going to do is to go ahead and place them as you can see and i'm going to sew after sewing number five in place guys this is what i have this is what it looks like you can see our sweetheart neckline so this is how you know that you joined um the fabrics together correctly okay you're going to have that v-shape that you have on the neckline i'm going to go ahead and iron all this seam 
all open okay all the seam that i joined i'm going to iron them open and the same thing that you did for this piece go ahead and repeat the same thing for the lining piece as you can see this is my lining piece i went ahead to join it exactly as i joined the main fabric and you can see what it looks like on the right side so i'm going to go ahead and also iron okay go ahead and iron the seam open for the lining piece also so i've gone ahead to do that guys and this is what i have you can see what it looks like on the right side and you can see that my joining is now visible for me to see so go ahead and repeat the same thing for the lining piece after doing that guys we are now going to create this slant that you can see on the waistline While we're drafting on our pattern paper, we placed our hip circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches allowance on the base of this pattern paper. And the length that we used was about 24 inches, which can pass for an inbuilt corset, but we are not doing an inbuilt corset. So you can go ahead and trim. Okay, go ahead and trim, especially the waistline. But what I'm doing now is to take my upper chest measurement, which we took while we were drafting, it was six inches. I took out the six inches and I measured the distance from my sh um, shoulder to my waist point, which is 16 inches. I added one inch to it for seam allowance. So what I'll do is to pick the side that I want to slant, and then I'm going to slant like this to meet the 17 inches. But before I do that, I'll come in by my stitching allowance of two inches okay i'm sure you guys are following so i'm just going to create the curve so whatever curve you want to create if you want to do a basque waistline you can go ahead and also do that okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut out this part as you can see so this is what i have this is the shape that i want note that i pinned my lining piece to the main fabric while i'm doing this and i have them on each other the wrong side facing each other okay take note of that so you don't go and cut the wrong side of the fabric okay so after doing that you can go ahead and adjust the waistline to fit your own waist um, measurements okay but you can still do that after you are done sewing so i'll be using this one yard of chantilly lace or net i don't know i'll be using it to cover this um main fabric up as you can see so what i'm going to do is to place it on it like this and i'm going to pin each layer okay so each layer from this number one to number five everything that i have there i'm going to go ahead and pin it down both on the base and on the upper part after pinning guys this is what i have so make sure the lace or the net is sitting well on your main fabric once you are sure of that go ahead and cut off the excess lace from the fabric okay so make sure you are leaving about half inch on the sides okay just so you don't run short of um the lace fabric the next thing i'm going to now do is to create bony channel so i went ahead to cut out this door face fabric which is two inches wide okay so what i'm going to do now is to use it to create boning channel on all the lines that you can see because my net is very visible i can see all the lines that i have here all my joining that i have i'm going to create boning channels on them okay so the only part i'm not going to create boning channel for is the one on the side in case my shaping will extend to that side so i'm not going to add boning allowance to that so i'm going to show you guys how i created the boning channel so i went ahead to fold my door face into two remember i said the wideness of the um, door face is two inches i folded it into two meaning i have one yard on fold i'll place the door face fabric very close to the line and i'm going to sew with half an inch all the way down very very close to the line okay make sure it's very close to the line after doing that i'm going to trim off the excess inside just so it's not puffy when i'm um done sewing okay so i'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess that i have inside after doing that i'm going to now fold the fabric over okay i'm going to fold it over i'll turn it to the other side and then i'm going to go ahead and fold it to cover the line now i'm going to cover it okay then i'm going to go ahead and sew on a straight line okay i hope you guys are following in case you didn't get it the first time 
i'm still going to explain again so this is my doll face fabric it is two inches wide i'm going to fold it into two and make it one inch so i'm going to now place it very close to the lines so make sure you're following the line okay i'll place it very close to it and i'm going to sew all the way down after sewing i'll trim off the excess i'm sewing with half an inch by the way after sewing i'm going to trim off the excess after trimming i'm going to turn it over and i'm going to use it to cover the line okay because i don't want the lines to be showing so i'm going to cover it up and i'm going to sew all the way down so guys after sewing my boning channel in place this is what it looks like in total i have about seven boning channel so i didn't add to the last two on the end Guys, after sewing my boning channel in place, I cannot trim off the excess um, fabric, okay? I also trim the one on the neckline. Next thing I'm going to do is to join my main fabric and the lining together. So I'm going to place them right sides facing right sides. I'm going to pin all the way around. After pinning, I'm going to sew it close. So I'll sew the neckline, I'll sew the arm, or I'll sew the side, and I'm going to turn it inside out through the base. So guys, for the back piece, I'm going to to cut on my pattern paper for this back piece i didn't add any allowance to it because it is already big because we added our hip um circumference divided by four on the waistline so it is already big so i didn't add anything so what i'm going to do is to arrange it in place so it is easy to know which goes where for the back because we just have two piece so just go ahead and notch either the zipper allowance or the side just so the for, um the number one pattern will not confuse you okay so i'm going to place them as you can see right sides facing right sides okay after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and sew using half an inch allowance. The same thing I did for the main piece, I'm going to repeat it for the lining piece. I'm going to place them right sides facing right sides and I'm going to go ahead and sew. So guys after sewing the front piece in place this is what i have okay so i'm just going to give it a good press okay and use my hemming comb to hold the neckline down for the back also i'm gonna have to join number one and number two and this is what it looks like okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to place the back and the front together because i know i want to know where to slant for the back just so i don't make any mistake i'm going to mark where i want to slant this is where the slant because the slant for the front and that of the back is supposed to meet up don't forget that after doing that i'll take out my six inches and i'm going to mark the distance from my shoulder to my waist okay which is 16 inches so just like i did for the front i'll add one inch to that measurement for stitching allowance and i'm going to go ahead and slant from that point to the other side okay After slanting, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. After cutting, this is what I have. Next thing I'll do is to bring in my net and I'm going to place it on it. Just like I did for the front, I'm going to pin it all the way down. Okay, after pinning, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. And I'll repeat the same thing for the other side. I'll pin my net all the way around and then I'm going to cut off the excess. After doing that, we'll be creating just one boning channel for the back, okay? So what I'm going to do is to take my doll face fabric, just like we did for the front. I'm going to just create one, and that is on this um, joining that we have on the back, that, that leg. I'm just going to do one boning channel there. so guys i've gone ahead to sew my boning channel in place and this is what it looks like okay so just go ahead and top stitch the um net on the main fabric next thing i'm going to do is to turn it with my lining so i'm going to place my lining right sides facing right sides and i'm going to go ahead and sew the zipper allowance area the neckline the arm or the side and i'm going to turn everything inside out through the base so guys after sewing this is what i have for the back okay so the next thing i'm going to do 
is to insert my bone into all the boning channels that I created. So I used this plastic boning for this tutorial and it's about quarter inch um, wide. So what I'll do is to place it about half an inch away from the base. Okay, make sure you cut it half an inch so that it will give room for us to be able to sew this half length to our skirt. Okay, after inserting the boning, go ahead and iron it flat. So I've gone ahead to do that, and this is what I have. The next thing I'll do is to bring in my skirt part. So I went ahead to cut out my skirt part and I turned it over with my lining. Okay, so this is what I have for the skirt part. This tutorial is just for the upper bodies. Okay, this is just your regular basic um skirt so what i'm going to do is to place the waistline of this half length on the skirt and i'm going to mark what i have on the um waistline some marking i realized i didn't place it well because the marking is too deep so i went ahead to bring it upward okay as you can see me i'm trying to adjust okay to know what i want so i'm going to mark on this line as you can see because i want the waist area to sit really flat so i'm just going to go ahead and use my chalk to mark it all the way after marking i'm satisfied with what i ha I, I have here so i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out after cutting i'll place them and you guys can see that it really is really sitting well okay i'm going to go ahead and sew so i'm going to have to stitch it down and this is what it looks like you can see the slanted part of our waist area and this is what it looks like on the back okay so for the back guys i've also gone ahead to turn my skirt using my lining so what i'll do is to bring in my back piece you should know the one that is going towards the um zipper area okay just arrange the back in place okay after arranging i'm going to repeat the same thing for the other side after doing that i'm going to now follow the shape that i have on the half length and i'll cut off the waist of the skirt After cutting, this is what it looks like. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to join them using half an inch. I'll go ahead and sew. After sewing, go ahead and iron it flat. I've gone ahead to do that, guys. And this is what we have for the back. You can see our slanted waistline. The next thing I'm going to do now is to fix my zipper in place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've sewn the zipper in place, and this is what it looks like. So guys, to create the drape on the waistline of this dress, I have this half yard of um, my fabric. What I'm going to do is to place the half yard to this zipper area. I've already sewn my zipper in place. I'm going to just lose it a little bit and then I'm going to pleat this part on it. So you don't need too much fabric for this drape. Okay, so I'm just going to open it up. If you have already sewn it, go ahead and open it up a little bit from the waistline, from that joining of the waistline. That is what I'm going to do. So before I insert it, I'm going to just pleat it and pin it in place just so it's easy for me to pass it through the zipper allowance area. So guys, I've gone ahead to sew it in place and this is what it looks like on the back. Okay, so I went ahead to just open up the zipper allowance area a little bit and I passed it through. And yeah, it is that easy. Next thing I'm going to do is to bring in my front piece as you can see. And I'm going to place it on the back piece and I'm going to use my stitching allowance to join it. So go ahead and shape the bust point. Place your bust um, circumference divided by 2, your waist circumference divided by 2 and your hip circumference divided by 2. Okay, just go ahead and shape it to your measurements. Okay, I've gone ahead to do that and this is what i have i forgot to mention guys you can add a ready-made bra cup inside your um victorian corset that is before you sew it to the skirt part you can do that okay i'm gonna have to shape my dress and i added this very basic off shoulder sleeves yeah guys the next thing you're going to do is to um determine how you want the drape but it's going to now come from the back that we stitch to the other side of the front so you can decide to just drape it and stitch it to the waist area of this other side you can decide to create a belt holder that you are going to pass it through and then drop um the excess whatever you want to do for the drape go ahead 
and do it okay yeah guys that is all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful don't forget to like this video leave your questions in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one